context of this. The Earth, planet number three. Roughly when was it formed? Guess. One billion. Three, three billion. Now I do commend that you guess. Why guess? It's an estimation. It's putting a stake out. And when you guess, your brain either gets the correct or the incorrect feedback. And whichever way you, you get, you register the information. The Earth, five billion years ago. Next, life. How long has life been around? Three billion. Anybody else? You are a function of it. <laughs> so how many years ago? I remember that currently the world is very concerned about life continuing to exist. So how long has it hung around? Four and a half billion. It started much before science had thought it was going to start. It can live in 130 degrees centigrade, i.e. well above boiling, and it can reproduce at 120 degrees centigrade. Hot stuff. The first hominids, the pre human. Roughly, when did the first hominid pre human arrive? Any guesses? 50 million? Eight million. Eight million. So we begin to look at the ratio, the relationship. Modern human brain, ladies and gentlemen, you own one. You have the modern human brain. So how many years has your model been around? Roughly. A hundred thousand years ago. A hundred thousand years ago. The brain has been around. Fifty thousand years ago, the primitive human, how did they communicate? Show me how, how did they communicate? Fifty million years ago. Science. 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 That's the way we have thought about how we did that. Segway. How many of you have pets or have had pets, animals? Good. How many of you uh, chat with your pet? Very good. It's kind of kuch, kuch, kuch. <laughs> how many have found that? Your animals, your pets, especially cats, dogs, and parrots, talk to you. They talk to you. Do they instruct you, give you instructions? Does the cat and dog tell you what to do? Yeah, it does. It tells you where to go, when to feed, when to stroke, 
so they learn how to speak to you. How long does it take a kitten or a puppy to work out how to control you? How long does it take? Yeah. A very small number of hours that that tiny, tiny little brain works out how to control the human brain. So a few hours, the human brain, our brain, has had 50 million years, 50,000 years, sorry, to sort out how to communicate. Do you think that in 50,000 years, the brain can work out how to talk to you? Of course it can. So the brain did not communicate saying <laughs> It spoke in the same way that we now speak, in the languages that it was particularly decided to communicate with during that time. So the human brain is not primitive. It's not a grunter, a moronic, a purely emotional animal. It's just like you and me. Same brain, same senses. And do you think in the past those senses were used as well as ours? Or worse or better? Same, worse, or better? Better. Because they did look, and they did listen, and they did smell, and they did touch and feel. So the past was a lot more futuristic than many people think it was. Not primitive. Not primitive. So, civilization, when the human brain was around, when did it develop eventually civilization, meaning on a global basis? Globally, roughly how many years ago did that start? Guess, ladies and gentlemen, guess. 5,000 years, 10,000 years, and those are the standard numbers given, roughly five to 10,000 years ago. Civilization. Look at it in relation to the time that has existed and the time that life has existed. In this room, in this room, how many years in this room? <laughs> If, if we, make, we make the mathematics easy, if we say a hundred people and on average in here 40 years old, <laughs> then you simply do the mathematics in 4,000 years of years in this room. That's nearly half the stretch of time of civilization. So in a room with 100, 200, 400 individuals, you have the same time span as civilization. If you add and top up and compare and synergize the experience and knowledge within that group. Location of the brain. How many years ago did the human brain work out where its brain was globally. Not where many people think it is. How many years ago was the brain located? Roughly. 500 years? Spot on. 500 years ago. Well done. That's when 
when we first began to realize that it was here, that it was here. And that was only a few people beginning to actually work it out, including such as Leonardo da Vinci. Formal education, formal education being a national system to educate the young brains. How many years ago did formal education establish itself on planet Earth? Yeah, 100 to 200 years, really, really tiny time. And at the moment, in the 7 billion people, 3 billion don't have any. Don't have any. So even now, in the present, formal education is not global. It's not yet global. It's still embryonic. If we think of 90% of our brain knowledge, especially cognitive functions, creativity, obviously, how many years ago did the 90% begin and end up to now? 90%. How many years? 20 years, 20 years. That's when we got 90%. And that 90% is what proportion of the amount of knowledge of the brain that should be eventually available in the future? What percentage of all that we know is the percentage of what we can know? Less than 1%. Less than 1%. So that is where we are. So what about the future? How has it progressed in the past? And what is going to happen in the future? This juncture here, this juncture is a a launching pad of the future in the 13 to 15 billion years that the human brain actually became self-aware and is just starting now. So the future is going to be very, very different. And the information about the human brain will accelerate and each individual will find out a lot more than any of us now know. And it will be standard. So it's a very, very different future from the past. And that's what we're going to look at. We know less than 1% of what there is to know. Creativity studies. So we're now looking now the last few years in which we were finding out about the brain and about creativity. Many of you will know the general generic studies on creativity where different age groups were taken. First group, kindergarten children. So in psychological tests, creativity tests, they were given a problem and examined the speed, the imagination, different perspectives, the fluidity, flexibility, elegance of the conclusions, etc. And we'll give them percentage scores. How many of you have children? Wonderful. How many of you have kindergarten children? Okay, a good number. What percentage do you think they scored on creativity? 98%. 98%? So you're in good form today. 95% plus. 95% plus. Next group, primary school. How many of the primary, or what, what percentage do primary school children get? 60, 70. How many of you have primary school kids? 
Structural beauty. 75%. Next group, senior school. How many, how many of you have senior? Okay, good number of you. What percentage? 60. 50 to 60. 50 it is. Now, those results are horrendous. That's now. And that's basically in every country. What's tragic about that is the result itself. And just as bad as the fact that you know the answers anyway. So before I even put the numbers up, you know them. So the studies are a waste of time. We know it. And ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have graduated from a college or a university? Congratulations, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well done. University, 25%. <laughs> Forming down. In the world now. 2000 to 2012, last few 1900 years. Adults. What percentage? 10 and declining. Now I'm sorry to kind of start the morning and give you depressing news. And to make it even worse, this is normal. It's normal. So the world is in trouble. Governments are really concerned. Because in terms of creativity, what is happening in terms of creativity? The average person on the planet, the average is what? Older. And if the average is older, what is the per capita creativity? <coughs> Going up or down? Down. 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 <coughs> so the future of the world is a planet populated with doddering, degenerating, increasingly less creative human beings. Have a nice day. <laughs> so that's the bad news. The good news is different. Normal is not natural. Very different. So the normal is not natural. This decline is not Natural. That's natural. Creativity should rise throughout life. We should be taught throughout life. All three genii progressed in creativity in their lives. People like Verdi composed his best works at what age? 80 to early 90. Sinan the architect, arguably the greatest architect in history. Greatest works in his early 90s. The great creators who died at 50 were more and more and more creative until they died. Those who were 34, until they were 34, they got better and then they stopped. So creativity improved throughout life, throughout life. That's natural. And therefore, at that turning point in history, this now begins to transform. If you and I, ACA, every school, every teacher, every parent, realizes it, learns about the brain, and then puts that information into the mix that allows every brain to learn, which is why creativity associations are essential. They are the early blossoms of the development of civilization 
and the knowledge we have about the brain. Current use of the brain, learning, oh, obviously memory, learning and creativity. In these areas, what percentage of the brain do we use? On a daily basis. The average person using memory, learning, creativity. What percentage? 10 to 20? Yeah, how many agree? Around 10 to 20 percent. Okay, so the majority of the only one between 1 and 10 percent. Okay, big majority. And between 20 percent or more. Okay, a few. So all your estimates are, are low. So you are pessimistic. <laughs> you are all interested in creativity and learning and memory, obviously. And your estimates are human use low. I am pleased to tell you that your estimates are optimistic. <laughs> Less than 1%. Now is that bad news? Bad news? Ladies and gentlemen, bad news? <laughs> it is wonderful news. Because if 1% or less is used, what's there as potential? 99% plus. So it's good news. And when you know it, you can then start to mine the mind. So again, the world is changing. The human race is changing. The self-awareness the brain awareness, the creativity awareness is now becoming burgeoning. How many of you in your note taking when you were in school took notes in one main color? What color did you use? Blue and black, the global number one colors. One color. When I was in school in England, I'm obviously English, we had to use one color, and in our form it was blue-black. And if I used blue, I got six of the best and a hundred lines. I will only use blue-black ink in my notes. I will only use blue-black ink in my notes. So how many of you use the blue or black primarily in your academic notes? Majority, almost unanimous. How many of you love colors? Everybody. If you take notes, we took notes in one color. That is, in science, a monochrome. One color. A monochrome is a monotone. A single tone. A monotone is a monotone, and a monotone is monotonous. In other words, we mispronounce it as monotonous. And if your brain is experiencing something that is really monotonous, what word do you use to describe it? Boring. Boring. You've all got it from whatever country you're in. Boring. What does your brain, your own personal brain, this is an experiment that you do, self-experiment, what does your brain do when it is born? Yeah. Thinks of something else, shuts out, switches off, shuts down, goes to sleep. What in most university schools and libraries particularly around the world, what are half the people often doing in libraries? Yeah, half of them are studying and the other half are sleeping. Giant public bedrooms of planet Earth are libraries because the brain is bored. We have taught it to uncreate. We've taught it 
to be monotonous. And that's why we use this moment and that is serious. Revolutions of the mind, so where are we? In history, the timeline, civilization, 10,000 years ago, and that actually began in the agricultural age. The agricultural age, where we thought agriculturally. Next age was the industrial age, where we thought industrially. So we thought agriculturally, we thought industrially. So the question is, what age are we in now? Quickly on your table, chat with your partners and find out what age you think we're now in. What age are we in? After the industrial, what are we in? So have a quick chat, find out what your partners think. <laughs> Thank you.